Hi there, this is Wayne Dixon for cgcookie.com. Today I want to show you how to rig up this fancy spring. We've got a couple controls going on here and we've got a top and a bottom and we can stretch and bend this spring and we've got a root control which you can scale it and move it wherever you want. So it's um, it's a little bit technical but I'll take, take you through each one of the steps. I'm going super duper fast like our last tutorial but all the steps are there. Now this object here in the middle is actually geometry but this technique will work if you're using a spline or if you're using geometry. There's just a few it's almost the same technique, but there's just a few key differences, which I'll point out at the end. All right, so are you ready? Let's do this. The first thing we're going to do is select everything and delete it. Then we're going to jump over into our preferences and make sure that we enable extra curve objects. Add curve extra objects. So then when I hit Shift A, I can choose curve and jump down here to Archimedean. Now we're going to set up our uh, settings. So we are going to go in the clockwise direction. It doesn't matter. I like clock clockwise because I'm that type of dude. Then we're going to choose eight turns and eight steps. We're going to make our height 0.5. Now remember, if we're going eight times around by the height of half. And that means my spring is the height of four, which is a pretty big spring, but that's pretty cool. We're not done. Uh, we're going to choose a Bezier and we're also going to choose auto. All right, so let's align things. I'm going to select the bottom here, change it to be aligned so that I can move it. I'm going to rotate it in the negative 22.5 degrees. Then I'm going to select our top one, do the same thing. Hit V, make it align. Jump to the top view again, rotate it in the opposite direction, 22.5. That's all nice and tidy now. Uh, one more thing I'm going to do is give this one some geometry. So let's go down into the data tab, in, under geometry, in the depth, we're going to go 0 0.75. Bang, we've got ourselves a spring. Let's name it. I'm going to hit F2 and we're going to call this one uh, Spring Geo. Now one thing I'm going to do to save some time, I'm going to duplicate this one, just move it over here in the negative three direction. I'm going to name this one Save for Later, because I've got plans for that one later. All right, let's jump back to this guy. Now I'm going to convert it to a mesh. If you're planning to do this with a curve object, do not do this step. All right, we need to make some changes because this is way too dense. So what we're going to do is lower the uh, resolutions down to one. It's made it jaggy, but don't worry. We are going to fix that with a subsurf later on. Okay, so now in object mode, we are going to hit F3 and we're going to type in convert. And then we're going to choose convert to, and we're going to choose mesh from curve. Pachow. This is now a mesh object. Let's add an armature. So what we're going to do is add a armature. Let's name it now with F2. We're going to call this one Spring Rig. And while we're here, we're going to name the data. So copy this and click in here and name the data. And while we're doing that, let's do the same thing. And Geo, going to name it. I'm not going to name this one because I'm going to delete it later. Selecting our bone, jumping into edit mode, side view, rotating around the cursor. We're going to rotate this one 90 degrees so it's lined up with the world. Let's name the bone. We're going to call this one root. Then we're going to add another bone, shift A. Make sure you select that bone. We're going to move it down. GZ negative one. Now the top is at this cursor point. So I'm going to deselect this point here and extrude it up. So I'm going to enable my vertex snapping and then extrude with the E key and snap it to the very top point here. There we go. And one more extrude. We're going to go E type in one. That will do. All right, let's select those with the uh, link select and duplicate them. Just move them over here for now. We're going to delete this middle guy because we don't need him. Delete. We're also going to select this one and flip it with Alt F. So now it's facing the opposite direction. Let's start naming some stuff. We've already named the root, but let's name this bottom one here, F2. Let's call it stretch in. Let's call this middle one stretch. And let's call this top one stretch out. This one here is going to be called top. This one here is going to be called bottom. All right, let's do some parenting. We're going to select this guy, this guy, and then this guy last. Control P, keep offset. And then we're going to select the stretch in and parent it to this bottom one. Control P, keep offset. Let's change the way it's displayed. So viewport display, let's choose B bone. Now I'm going to select these two guys. Hit Control Alt S, scale them up just so it's a little bit bigger. Then we're going to snap them back to this point here. So drag them along here and snap. All right, let's select all these bones and turn off the deformation. So shift W and turn off deformation. Just to doubly make sure, let's choose disable here. So we're doubly sure these do not do any deformations. Let's jump into wireframe so we can see what we're doing. We're going to make this one stretchy in the middle. So we're going to go to the uh, bendy bones. We're going to drag it up to 32, that will do. Then we need to add a couple of constraints. So we do that in pose mode. So jump into pose mode, select this big guy, which is our top, then shift select the middle guy. Control shift C, choose copy transforms. 
Now when we move the top, when we rotate around the median, you'll see it is bending. Same thing happens when we do this here. We're not finished because we need to select this guy and then shift select this guy and add a stretch to constraint. There we go, stretch to constraint. Now we want to disable the volume preservation on that one because it's going to deform our spring in a cartoony way, which we don't want for this type of spring. Now it's time to add our deformation bones to actually deform this spring. So let's go to object mode. Let's hide this guy with the H key, get him out of our way. We're going to use this guy over here. But let's turn off our depth here. So we've got a depth of zero. Also jump into edit mode and then curve and show type. Let's make it poly. Now we can use each one of these points to snap to. So in object mode, we're going to position it back at the cursor, which happens to be at the world origin. So selection to cursor, bang, there we go. Now in edit mode for our armature, we're going to snap a bone to each one of these points. So let's jump into edit mode and let's just choose over here. We're going to hit shift A. This is our bone. We're going to name it now. We're going to call it spring def.001. Then we're going to actually start snapping it. Remember, I've got my vertex snapping on. So we're going to hit G, snap. Then we're going to Grab our top here and snap it to this point. Here comes the monotony. Extrude with E, snap with control. Go all the way up. Extrude, snap, extrude, snap, extrude, snap, extrude, snap. Oh my God, am I finished yet? Why did I make this so long? Oh, keep going, I'm dizzy. Let's go fast forward. Why did I go around eight times? What an idiot. I'm nearly there. Oh my God, make this pain end. When will it stop? No, I love this, I really do. I love rigging. Rigging is awesome. We're nearly there. Oh, look, a couple more to go. Ta da 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 da. All right, now we're going to select everything. We're going to name these bones. But didn't I already name them? Kind of, but I hate that name. So we're going to hit Control F2 and we're going to rename our bones and rename the dot zero. We're going to place that with an underscore. Bang, there we go. Much nicer. Now these bones are all over the place. It doesn't really matter, but let's tidy it up with Shift N and then align our roll to the global Z axis. That looks much nicer. But for now, we are finished for this save for later. We can actually delete it. And let's bring back our normal spring geo. Time to constrain it to our armature. Select our geometry, then select our armature. Control P, choose automatic weights. We're not done yet. Time to keep going with our constraints. So we're going to add one constraint here to the bottom. It's going to be an armature constraint. So let's go add bone constraint, choose armature. Then we're going to choose our armature object, which is called spring rig. Then we're going to choose stretch. This is when I realize I spelt something incorrectly. So I'm going to go back and fix it. Stur stretch. Now stretch. Fixed. All right, where was I? I've added this constraint here. One more constraint to add. I'm going to select our root, then select this guy, Control Shift C, and choose Copy Scale. Now select this guy that has the constraint on it. Link select, go up to Pose, Constraints, Copy Constraints to Selected Bones. Pachow. Now one thing we need to do is disconnect these bones from the parent. We do that in edit mode. They're all still selected, then hit Alt-P and clear the parent. So now when we go to pose mode and we move this around, ba -ba -da -ba, we've got ourselves a spring. But let's tidy everything up now. All right, so let's select our top control, our bottom control, and our root. And then invert that selection and then move them with the M key to a layer that we're not using. Bang, there we go. These are our three control bones. Next, we're going to make this rig pretty. I'm going to use an add-on that I helped create. The link is in the description. So the root, I'm going to add a root shape and then go create. This is too small, make it five. That's looking pretty good. Then select the top and the bottom and we're going to make this one a circle. Click create. That's way too big. Let's go one. Perfect. Let's create some colors. Let's go bone groups. Let's just make it two. So this one's going to be red. Choose red and then assign. Then invert your selection. Make this one yellow, choose yellow, then click assign. Only one more thing to do, and that is to add a subdivision surface. Let's make our viewport two and our render two. So there we go. So now we've got ourselves a bouncy spring rig, which is all parented correctly. All right, so what if you wanted to apply this using a spline object rather than the mesh geometry that I use? So the only difference is when we apply our armature modifier, we use some different settings. So I'll just delete the one that I've already done here and show you how to do that. So what you would do is select this guy here, then shift select here, choose control P, and rather than choosing automatic weights, you choose envelope weights. But we're not finished. We also need to make sure that we assign that under the bone envelopes here. And now I've already done all the rest of the steps, but you can see this is our spline object 
and it's moving exactly the same way. That is how you get it working if you wanted to keep it as a spline object. Now, if you are running into a few deformation issues when you're using a spline, you might have to use hooks for each one of those points, but that's a very cumbersome job, and I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial. So there we go, quick tutorial from CG Cookie. Thanks for watching.